Ahoy! My hopes for this game weren't high, but the day before managed to be both the most misleading and disappointing release that I have played in this entire year. Not only is the game bad and it does a great job at being terrible, but it also is entirely different from what we were promised. So I talked about this video with the information that was going to be a survival MMO type of game. It is not. In its essence is an extraction shooter that also does very, very, very little in terms of survival elements. Beyond that, the game manages to perform miserably in almost every other regard too, and it doesn't really have any redeeming quality to make up for it, nor is it bad in a very funny way. The first thing that you see when you're launching the game are multiple questionable warnings about what kind of data they want to collect from you, which seems to be way too much for what they actually need to run a game. And then you get thrown straight into character creation. No main menu to sort out a few settings first, adjust your volume, anything like that, no accessibility settings to speak of. This game just does it raw. You get a few basic perk adjustment options for your character and then you're getting thrown into the world. Now there's an incredibly long introduction next, but we'll talk about that a bit later because I want to talk about the core gameplay itself. After you've completed the introduction and looked at your camp, the next place that you're going to is the city. The city is essentially the main hub to do things in and it seems to be the only map that you can access at the moment unless there is one that unlocks after way more progression but based on how advanced some players were that i fought against i am assuming that everyone just stays on this very map in the cities you can encounter two things zombies and other players odds are 95 percent of the time you're not going to encounter either if you ever wanted to play a zombie simulation that is based on what the city would be like after all the zombies have already been killed and everything in the city has already been looted, then this is the game for you, because that is exactly what you're going to get most of the time. You're just running around with limited stamina, you can't permanently sprint, and you're desperately trying to find anything that you can loot. And what you can loot is very limited in itself. Normally in any kind of game of this sort, there are quite a few sources of loot around you most of the time, obviously because you're running around collecting things so you can gear up, but not in this game. There are bags that you can loot and there are certain shelves and saves that you can loot for the most part. However, that doesn't mean that all of them are lootable. Sometimes you see a duffel bag that absolutely looks like a loot bag, but it isn't for no reason at all. And many times you will come across loot that has already been looted and isn't lootable because it seems that the respawn time for any resources that have previously been looted is incredibly high. So almost all of the time when I ran into something that could actually be looted, it was already gone. And again, things from the trailer like looting cars just outright don't exist. In context of the quest line later, I also needed to loot certain resources in an area to get specific materials. And my impression is that I was entirely unable to finish this quest because the thing that I was collecting was only lootable from bags in the specific area as far as I know and almost all of the bags were looted. I got one of the items that I needed and then I looped around the area for 10 minutes trying to find anything else that was lootable and not looted yet and I couldn't find anything so I am fairly certain I would have had to wait until these items respawn in order to actually finish the quest which also would have obviously been a massive risk hanging around that area for so long if other players are on the same quest. The vast majority of buildings in the city can't even be entered either. There's a handful of select buildings that you can go into, but most of them are just walled off and it's just incredibly dead in the entire area. There's just nothing going on, long, empty pathways with nothing that you can look at or enter or interact with. And some of this could be argued away as this is just a more realistic apocalypse setting, but I don't think that applies for the lack of interaction with various things. And speaking of interactions, modern game mechanics that allow you to interact with objects like for example mantling, sliding or anything like that, of course, do not exist. The combat is about as exciting as you would expect it to be. When I first found some zombies I was actually excited because I saw three of them at once and I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. What happened was that my game froze and I couldn't shoot and I had to relaunch it. And I'm not the first person to experience that one either. Fighting some of the zombies later, it's a very basic combat system. You do not even have a melee option or anything. You just shoot them in the head until they're dead. You kite them and in between you reload and that's pretty much all there is to it. 
That is, unless you are running into one of the boss types that aren't really very recognizable. You can kind of tell from the sounds they're making that they're supposed to be a bit more scary, uh, which are just massive bullet sponges. I'm going to show you the fight here a little bit, uh, sped up to see uh, how long it really takes to take this guy down. And then in comparison, I'd also like to show you how long it took for me to die after that when another player spotted me. And this was from at least near full health. I am not necessarily opposed to a quick or long time to kill, but at least keep it somewhat consistent between the zombies and the players. That was absolutely ridiculous, shooting the zombie over and over and over just to get immediately blown up by a player afterwards. Sure, this could be a gap that could be from weapon difference, but even then, I think the gap shouldn't be that big in a game like this. My only other encounter with players was me running into a guy that wasn't even all too keen on shooting me, I think, but I just wanted to see if a guy with a helmet was killable. If I unload my mag into them, they were not, and they also had a friend, so I died very quickly. And that also reminded me that the servers are not limited to solo, but you can play as groups, and that's intended, and there is no solo option, which is also uh, kind of fun for the people who play in groups, that is. Dying taught me that the respawn place when you enter the map is at least semi-random, which makes it all the more confusing in connection with the quests, because sometimes you can spawn much closer to a quest or much further away. If you're aware of that, you can kind of switch the quests around accordingly, but it just doesn't make any sense to me in the first place. You then have escape points where you can leave the map again and return to the main settlement, and that is the entire loop of the game. But the introduction to the game and a few other aspects also deserve to be mentioned in their own right. The first thing that you're met with is a very long introduction phase where you're just walking from A to B, back to A, then to C, back to A or B or whatever, talking to a bunch of people that are introducing you to the new place that you're in and telling you that you can basically buy stuff and store stuff in specific places. This entire thing goes on for way too long, including adjusting a couple of settings. It took me 18 minutes to just go through the basic introductions before I ever was able to enter the actual fighting zone or get any kind of feel for what the actual gameplay loop would be. It almost feels like this is on purpose because the devs don't want you to see the actual game. But even in these early stages, the game shows a lot of its cracks. For example, the navigation of any dialogue is horrible. Sometimes you advance with spacebar, sometimes you have to click on things, and some navigation options are through tab. It's just all over the place for absolutely no reason. We've course also getting to see the graphics here, which are nothing like what was shown in the trailers. My PC is at this point most certainly not the newest tech anymore, and the game automatically maxed out almost all of my settings from the start, and it did not look like maxed out settings for any game should look. It just all looks outdated and especially the textures and shading are very unimpressive, so everything just looks washed out and bad. In later areas it's also very noticeable that many of the animations are absolutely horrible, super clunky, especially the jumping animation, running animations. It all looks super, super basic and unfinished. Another thing you notice in the starting area is the storytelling. The introduction of the various characters is done by you walking around and talking to them and then being directed to talk to the next person. And for some reason, all of them love you immediately before you even say a single word. There's no build-up of any relationship with these characters. They're just all like, wow, so cool you're here. Have some free stuff because we love you. This is a multiplayer game, so I don't have a very high bar here, but do something slightly more inspired than that, or just leave out the characters and just make it a little vault for your storage and a place with one guy where you can buy weapons and everything else that you need. Instead of having you walk across a large area for no reason, where everything is separate from each other, just to have these characters talk to you that don't really matter at all. After you're done with all of that and you think you can jump into the world, your next step is actually to get to know your camp. This is a completely separate instance area where you can set up a little camp in the bush, place down some things that you buy from the shop and then hang out there, I guess. There doesn't seem to be any actual benefit to that. It doesn't seem to interact with anything else in the game. It's just cosmetic stuff and that's it. And I have no idea what it matters for at all or why it's even in the game. Oh, and on the topic of survival mechanics, I almost forgot them because they are entirely forgettable. While I was traveling through the town, I completely forgot to both drink or eat anything and I was entirely unimpacted while running for a very long time, and the moment you enter the base, all of your stats get completely refreshed. 
So it really doesn't matter unless you're camping out in the city for multiple hours at once and I don't see why you would ever do that. All in all, my expectations were low and I'm still disappointed. Not only is the game entirely mislabeled, we were entirely misled as to what it was going to be, but it's also bad at what it's trying to be. Even as an extraction shooter, it's a very bad game with bad graphics, bad mechanics, bad gameplay, bad enemy density, bad combat, and nothing that's redeeming it in any way. The overwhelmingly negative Steam reviews are absolutely deserved and I would highly recommend against buying this game. And if you've already bought it and not yet tried it, I would highly recommend refunding it. This developer has a history of dropping games if they're not performing well and just no longer updating them, so I would not expect a magical turnaround for this one to come at all. But while this game has left me entirely unimpressed, another game that I didn't expect impressed me recently. And that's something we'll talk about in the next days, so consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you want to get notified of that. Huge shout out to all of my patrons who support these videos. Thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.